All right, everybody. Welcome to the show. We have our first guest tonight. Now, he's the founder of Journey Forward. Please put your hands together for Dan Cummings. Hi, Dan. Yeah. Thanks for coming, buddy. Now, you have a great story, and your organization helps people that have had spinal cord injuries. Let's talk first about what happened to you, your story, Dan. Uh, Ten years ago, June 24th, the exact, I was just out hanging with some friends, just a regular summer night. I was 19 years old, and we're out on a lake, and I decided to go for a swim. And I dove off a boat, not realizing the depth of the water, and next thing I knew, I opened my eyes underwater, and I couldn't move. Mm -hmm. And luckily, two of my friends saw that I wasn't coming up, and ran in and pulled me out of the water. And right away, I noticed you know, I couldn't move my legs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't move my legs, I can't move my legs. One of my buddies bent down, he said, I touched my leg. He's like, Dan, can you feel that? And right away, I knew what happened. And I said, call 911. Mm -hmm. And that was the last thing I remember. I must have went into shock or something, but I was med flighted to Boston Medical Center where I was rushed uh, into the intensive care unit. I came down with a severe pneumonia and my left lung had collapsed because I smelled so much dirty water. Mm -hmm. And I was on a life support system known as a ventilator mm -hmm. because I was unable to breathe on my own. And in the beginning, uh, when my family was asking, you know, the chances of me walking out of there, the doctors just told my family to take one day at a time. Mm -hmm. you know, we don't know if he's going to make it through the night. And after a couple weeks, I started to breathe a little bit of my own, and the doctors realized that I was going to survive, but the thought of me ever walking again or ever having any sense of independence was out of the question. Mm -hmm. I was going to be a C6 quadriplegic and spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And, uh, now, now what, what did you think right when they told you that news? Uh, that I was 19 years old and I have my whole life ahead of me and I am going to do whatever it is that I need to do to get out of my wheelchair, mm -hmm. no matter how long it took. And I made a promise to myself that I was dedi dedicate my life to getting out of my wheelchair and I knew as long as I took one day at a time and I just gave it everything that I had on that one in particular day, that I one day would get up and walk again. Mm -hmm. you know, I was only 19 years old. I had my whole life ahead of me. And uh, you know, I just went for it. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I figured I had two choices. A, I could listen to what everyone was telling me. I could go in my wheelchair, feel bad for myself, or I could say, B, you know, I'm gonna do what I need to do to prove everyone wrong. And mm -hmm. that's the direction I chose. So for the next three years, I was going to physical therapy in Boston. Uh, but all insurance was covering was 45 minutes, three days a week, mm -hmm. which was a joke. You, know, yep, I'm you needed to, more, right? Yeah, I'm trying to cover from a spinal cord injury, not a broken leg. Right. You know, so I was doing as much as my, on my own as I could. You know, I was going to the YMCA in my off days. I rode an electrical stimulation bike. I had a trainer who worked my upper body with me. At home, I was doing as much as I could on my own. I was working with wrist weights, uh, getting up in the standing frame you know, every night for three hours, watching the Red Sox games. But ultimately, I knew I needed more. You know, mm -hmm. I just felt that limitations were being put on me. I felt my physical therapists were teaching me how to live in a wheelchair. Right. I wanted to be taught how to get out of my wheelchair. Mm -hmm. I found out about a place in Southern California that worked with spinal cord injuries mm -hmm. up to three hours a day. Now, did you find that online, or how did you? My physical therapist actually in Boston told me about it. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he knew that I wanted more. You know, yeah. I was just always on him. You know, I need more, I need more. And uh, so he found out about this place, and he told me about it. So I went out there, and I checked it out. You know, so I went out there in September of 2002. Uh, my brother lives out in Los Angeles, so I flew out to L.A. Me and him drove down to San Diego, and I checked it out, and I loved it. I loved everything about it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I went in there. I mean, they had quadriplegics, paraplegics, you know, on spin bikes, on total gyms, things my physical therapist wouldn't dream of doing with me, mm -hmm. you know. And I saw an opportunity. You know, they were giving me an opportunity. You know, they were giving me the knowledge, the tools, everything I needed to get out of my wheelchair. In but the, the end, only place this existed me. was in California. Yeah. And I couldn't ask anyone to get up and move with me. You know, they had their careers, their family, their mm -hmm. children on the East Coast. And ultimately, it was going to be a move that I was going to have to make on my own. You know, mm -hmm. I did have a brother a couple hours north if any emergencies ever happened. But, you know, it was a move I was going to have to do on my own. So mm -hmm. I went back to Boston with the goal. You know, with the goal to do everything on my own. I just wouldn't let people do things for me anymore. You know, mm -hmm. tying my sneakers, I mean, it was taking me 45 minutes. You know, three months later, I was doing it in 30 minutes. You know, two months later, I was doing it in 15. I was dressing myself on all on my own. I uh, went and I got my license. I learned how to drive again. And 11 months later, I was independent enough to move to California. Wow. So on August 1st, 2003, I moved out to California. I got a one-bedroom apartment, and I joined this program. Mm -hmm. And I spent nearly four years there before I walked out of there. Mm -hmm. Tell me the difference now. When you walked in and four years later, what was the biggest difference? Well, I rolled in with my wheelchair. You rolled in? Yes, yeah. I, was, I rolled in. Uh, many of my, most of my body still paralyzed. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I just, you know, I gave it everything I had, man. You mm -hmm. know, blood, sweat, and tears every day, day in and day out. Just took one day at a time, gave it everything I had, and four years later, I walked out of there. Wow. And that left me with a new mission because I couldn't understand why coming from Boston, Massachusetts, the capital of the medical field, right. why I had to move 3,000 miles away to find a place to help me get out of my wheelchair. Mm -hmm. But that's what I had to do and that's what I did. And that's why I wanted to bring this program back to Boston so others didn't have to mm -hmm. get up and leave their friends, family, and everything they've ever known. Right. So I came back to Boston and we raised the money and we opened up Journey Forward. It's a nonprofit organization dedicated to bettering the lives of those with spinal cord injuries mm -hmm. through an intense exercise-based program. Our website is journey-forward.org. Mm -hmm. If you want to go check it and there's out, there's another uh, website too with the events, right? Yeah, we have a couple. We're a nonprofit organization, so we're doing a, a couple fundraisers right now. Because unfortunately, we're not covered by insurance. Our program at Journey Forward, mm -hmm. because we're not a medical facility. We okay. don't have medical. We don't have physical therapists. We have exercise so somebody, physiologists. If somebody needs the services there, what? Do, what it's do they all have private to pay. Private unfortunately, pay, okay. it's private pay. It's one hundred dollars an hour, and you know, it's it's not like they're coming in there for six hours and walking. You know, it's, yeah, it's a it's long a lot process. Of work. So one hundred dollars mm -hmm. an hour adds up. To get insurance companies to cover it, which is my ultimate goal, is going to take a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be a long road. There are a lot of hurdles we have to overcome, but working at it. And more of a short-term goal, what I would like to do is raise so much money that we can offer a client scholarship fund next mm -hmm. year to bring it down the price for some people. Let, let me ask you this now. Since Journey Forward has started, um, are there any people that have gone through it that have said, do you know, this really made a difference in my life because, I mean, you're affecting lives. Oh, absolutely. I've had... Uh, you know, more clients than not come into my office, you know, and just thank you so much for bringing this program here. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, one kid who, hey, I heard about that place in California. I was going to get up and go, and then I found out there's a place in Boston, so I didn't have to leave, you mm -hmm. know. So, yeah, I have have a lot of people coming up and thanking me, but that's not why I did it. You mm -hmm. know, I didn't do it to be thanked. You I did, did it, it to help, to help people. Yep. You Let me ask you, where is it actually located? It's in Canton, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably just a little south of Boston. Mm -hmm. And, um, and where can people find out more information? You said online. On our website, we have a website, journey-forward.org, okay. where they can also learn more about the Making Steps campaign, mm -hmm. a big fundraiser we're doing in October, right. where I'm going to walk a mile to raise money for Journey Forward. Mm -hmm. uh, we figured there's about 2,000 steps in a mile. We're asking for, my goal in 2010 is to raise $500,000. Mm -hmm. Because with $500,000, that's going to allow me to hire three more trainers, get about three more pieces of equipment we need, and offer five or six client scholarships next year. Fantastic. So that's my goal. So we're doing a Making Steps campaign where I'm going to walk a mile in October. We figure there's 2,000 steps in a mile. We're asking for $250 per step. Mm -hmm. 250 times 2,000 is 500,000. That's how we came up with those numbers. We right now probably about 200 probably about 200 steps sponsored right mm -hmm. now. So uh, that's going good and find out more information on that. You can go on our website, journey-forward.org and that's the Making Steps campaign. All right, folks, this is Dan Cummings. Journey Forward is the organization. We thank you for doing it. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you.